The reason I'm making this video today is because we received uh, a kind of a fake application. We had some red flags go up and then we started reviewing it and realized that it has some false information in. So I uh, thought it would be some good content for you guys to use. Um, this is our uh, application cover sheet that we use. Um, it has some information on the, the process that we use, the different processes, um, uh, the, the, the screening criteria that we use, just sort of summarizes everything. And then down the bottom right here, it has a, a workflow of how we process each application. So this is really something that you need to develop if you haven't got it already in your rental application screening uh, process, if you deal with a lot of rentals. Um, because fair housing is going to look for this stuff and it's going to help you uh, treat your applicants and your tenants uh, with the same process uh, and that's how you're going to avoid uh, discrimination um, and uh, and false discrimination lawsuits as well so let's start off with this application right so some app some property management companies, they will go ahead and just do a credit report. Uh, they'll ask for a couple of uh, recent pay stubs and they'll run um, you know, their criminal checks, uh, ask for a copy of ID, that'll be it. We do a little bit in depth. We actually also do a, a residency check as well. And we, um, we ask for two months uh, pay stubs at least if they're W2'd. Uh, full bank statements uh, for two months if they're not W2'd or, or tax returns, recent filed tax returns. Um, so on this particular application, uh, we got all the documentation together and um, the residency that we do is, uh, we actually have an online form that we send to previous landlords that they can click and fill it out, it's mobile friendly. Uh, but this is, a, this is a manual one if they don't uh, have access to email uh, that we go ahead and have them, uh, we go ahead and do this over the phone. So this is, these are the questions, same questions we ask everybody, again, uh, keeping in keeping with fair housing, making sure that every, every applicant is treated the same, they get the same uh, questions asked to their previous uh, residencies, their landlords. And when we start looking at the application itself, and I've kind of blacked out the personal information here, uh, so you don't know who it is. We have them go ahead and do a, an online application. There's a lot of disclosures that they go ahead and, and sign off on to make sure that we have all the correct authorizations from them. And then we go ahead and pull, pull all their credit and criminal and uh, eviction uh, reports as well. So we can see, you know, and if, if they've had any rent payment history filed on their credit and everything. Um, and then on this one, it wasn't a property manager, a professional property manager, it was a private landlord. And we, what we usually do is we go in online uh, through our realtor records and we pull the property information record, the public record of who that property really belongs to. And if it is a name match with the uh, residency reference that the applicant has uh, provided in their application. So this is this is the property uh, that we went ahead and pulled up. It was not a name match. Uh, it was actually the name of uh, of a company, um, which fair enough. I mean, you know, they could be giving us the name of someone at the company. So we went ahead and we looked up that company and researched. Um, very different name to the one that was provided. So that was a red flag. So when we went ahead and we called that person because their email got bounced back, which was another red flag, uh, we went ahead and called them and uh, it, was, it was even a different name than the one that was on the application. So that was odd and they provided us with a completely different email address. And then when we got the residency verification, there was a couple of things. The rent amount was, uh, was different. And then also uh, we asked them to provide additional comments. And that is if they have something in addition that they would like to say. And the additional comments was almost word for word for what the tenant put on the application. And uh, that, that was very strange. We thought that that was, that was just too much of a coincidence that it was uh, the comments provided by the applicant and the landlord were very, very, very similar, um, almost word for word. So that was kind of strange. Then we go and we go 
to the proof of income and we look at the pay stubs. I'm going to show you, so these were the pay stubs we were provided right here. Now these pay stubs are very, very generic. A lot of pay stubs are kind of generic, but when they're very generic like this, like with no company logo or any kind of accountant information or anything, it's a little, a little suspect, so we just pay a little bit more attention to that. Now, when we started looking at them, we realized that uh, the, if, if you have a look on here, I'm going to show you. So these, these are supposedly the hours worked and everything, and uh, the salary was 13.48. And then we thought, okay, well, hold on, how long is that for? Because they put one amount as their uh, net income claimed on their application. And uh, when we tallied up this, this is for a bi-weekly period, together with another pay stub, which is exactly the same amount, we realized that it was not matching. It was a lot less. In fact, it was less than our income requirements. So we thought, okay, well, that is that is odd. And we were given four pay stubs. And then also the other odd thing, and this is what you have to catch, whenever someone um, provides fake pay stubs, ones that they just created on a computer, they never get the figures right. Um, and usually there's, there's, there's um, crooks out there on Craigslist or whatever that, that they can pay to do this, but um, whenever they do that, they, they never get the figures right. So we can always tell. And uh, this is an easy one right here. So the year-to-date gross is 5392. Year-to-date deductions, 137132. Well, funnily enough, on every single one of the pay stubs, all of these figures are exactly the same. So apparently their year-to-date and their year-to-date deductions, their net pay, their total, everything was exactly the same uh, for every pay stub. So we know they're fake. We know they're fake. It's just someone trying to trying to get through. Um, now, when we go ahead and we send them a denial of application, we have to be careful because there's something called uh, adverse action we're required whenever we pull a credit report. If there's adverse action related to something on the credit report, we have to provide that notice. Um, so we, d we did actually provide them with a, with a credit because their credit was non-existent, pretty much. And, um, and we do have certain requirement limits on credit uh, scoring and also their, their residency as well, due to the, the name mismatch. Uh, we didn't need to provide an adverse action for the income because it's actually nothing to do with the credit, and that's just the uh, Fair Credit Reporting Act requirements for the adverse action notice. So we just sent them a denial, but uh, just pay attention when you get these applications, you know, especially if you're receiving dozens of applications, so you have a hot month, uh, just just pay special attention because once you go ahead and approve that person, you got them for another year. And, um, and if they lied about everything in their application, you don't know who else they're bringing to the property, you don't really know where their income is coming from, are they stable or not, um, they could be hiding a bunch of stuff, um, you know, do pay attention it's important these applications uh, very important and probably the most important part of the process uh, because these are the people that you've got to deal with over the next year or so my name is Oliver with Morgan Property Solutions hopefully this video was informative uh, make sure to like and to subscribe uh, to see more videos